Greetings everyone and welcome back to another How To with Ben. Today I'm going to be showing you how to bring in scan data to Fusion 360 to set it up so that you can begin making check sockets. This session is designed to work around a teaching aid which I'm providing for free so a link should pop up. So if you just click on that link it'll take you to our Payhip shop, download the OBJ quad file there and, and bring it into Fusion 360 and you can go through the process with me side by side. The file is called Sol's Paw because it's a 3D scan of Sol's left arm, which we lovingly call his paw. Sol's Paw and other files will all be available from the Payhip store. We're never going to ask for money from them, however, feel free to make a donation if that's something that you uh, would like to do to support our work. Points to touch on today are the NaviCube, which I'm going to be using. So you can always come back to the, the view that you start with if you just click this button here, it takes you back to the home view. Likewise, if you click on individual faces, or use the uh, cursors and arrows, you can navigate using this box up here, which is a really smart invention. Similarly, you can use the mouse and keyboard. So if you press the middle mouse button, you can pan. Holding shift and the middle mouse button allows you to uh, pan and tilt. So you can pan from left to right, which rotates the object. You, the, uh, green dot in the, moment, in the middle of the screen is the focal point and we can change that as well so those are the, the main ingredients so we've got middle mouse button shift and middle mouse button and then if we shift and the middle mouse button press so let's say we want this to be the focal point here the, one of the outer condyles click on that that now becomes the pan handle that we grab the object by so when I tilt now it's green dot there shows me that that's the uh, pivot point Without any further ado, let's get straight into it then. So we're going to import the mesh and set it up on the origin like this. So the origin, you can click on and off here. I'm going to pitch this as if you're somebody who's coming at this uh, design from a necessity. So if you've never done this before and suddenly you need to do it, there's a lot of things up on the top panel here that will just confuse you. I'm just going to show you the things that you need to know in order to be able to do what I'm going to do now. So in a new file, go over to um, insert at the top drop down menu and insert mesh so having downloaded Sol's Paw, you should now be able to bring it into fusion and as i say that that file is already in the correct format you don't need to convert it or do anything with it it's an obj quad now it comes in some distance away from the origin so what i'd like you to do first of all is just click center and that just brings the two together so it's working in the middle it's still pointing up in the air it comes in a, a strange alignment, so we're going to have to get this now facing forward. And it's a featureless object, and we have to align it. So it's going to be quite fun. Bear with me. It's a hell of a challenge. Last thing to mention is the millimeters setting. You can have all sorts of different um, settings on here. This scan was taken at the millimeter scale. Make sure that you're set to millimeters. And that's it. Just OK. So that brings in a file. You can't use this at the moment for modeling. So this is an OBJ quad file. What we need to do next is convert it. So we go up to the menu at the top and in the create space, the create menu rather, we want to pick create form. That changes all of the options that are available and takes us into another space. Now, the create space is a magical space. Nothing you, de nothing you do in this space is ever recorded in the timeline. So once we're inside here now, the outcome will be saved and the beginning state will be saved, but this is kind of an ethereal area and that's relevant later in part two so I'll come back to that point anything you do in this space is not captured in the design memory in the history tree down the bottom here right so we have the uh, form that we want to convert to a t-spline that will make it a solid body in fusion fusion will regard it as a solid object at the moment it regards it as a mesh which is a set of interlaced quadrangles now because it's a quad file there should be no triangles in here the process that we're doing cannot be done if there are triangles, if it can be done with one or two, but um, ideally you want something like end topology or Autodesk, re uh, Autodesk Recap Photo to convert this into a quad for you. Now both of those are paid um, platforms, you don't get them for free. It can be done in Blender, but every time I've seen anybody send me a file from Blender, there are a bunch of triangles in there which just mess up the workflow. So it can be done um, for free. However, I always end up using Entopology or Autodesk Recap Photo. Once we're in the convert space, you can either right click and convert, but I don't see the option there now. I think something's changed in the recent update. I used to get the option here to convert, but now I'll have to go to Utilities and convert the body. 
Right, so make sure now that everything in the dialog box is done properly. We want to convert it T-spline to a B-rep. No, we want to go quad mesh to T-spline. We're going to do that to this body. So it's asking in the selection, which body do you want us to convert? And then the final operation is to convert it to a new body. That's the only option that we've got from uh, quad mesh. Okay, so there are other options available. They will not work. This is the exact uh, configuration that you need. Okay, that. And we're still not quite out of the woods yet. So that will convert the quad mesh. But there's another final step, which is to finish the form. When we click finish form now, that will take us out of the create space. All of the menu will change. We're back in the design um, workspace. So that's really stage one, bringing in the mesh. We'll talk about um, scanning and casting and conversion of files and cleaning up scan data in subsequent videos. You now have a copy of this file to work on. So if you download it from our PayHip store, again, I'll just bring the link up underneath and it will be in the description of the video. You've got a file to emulate what I'm doing here. Right, so we'll move on to the next part, which is to align this body. So at the moment, this limb is kind of pointing up into the air. What we need to do is rotate it round. So what I'm going to do is click on the body, so bring up the, mod, the, the menu of all the bodies here. This is the original uh, OBJ quad. Turn that off. This new body is the one that we're going to move. So just click on it and press M for move. Now, we can see that if I was to try and pivot this now, it would pivot it from this point. Okay, so that's no good. I'm always going to try and keep the pivot point set on the origin. That doesn't make any sense, but let me just show you how it works. Right, so I'm going to set the pivot point, turn the body back off. Now I can choose the true center of this world. So this in, in this infinite CAD world that we're in, this is the center of the universe. So just set that now and aligned my motions to be uh, concurrent with the directions of the world space. Now I want Sol's paw to be facing forwards with the arm coming down. So as if it was attached to his body, with the inner crease of the elbow facing forward, if that makes sense. So we're just okay that I've now chosen that point to pivot on. That makes it a little bit easier now. I'll turn the body back on and I'm going to be using the Navi cube up the front. So I, if you click on the front face, so I, my eyesight is really bad. That's the right face, that's the front. Okay, so there's the front. Now we're nearly right. So I first of all just need to do a 180 flip that way and then I won't maneuver in any other way so there are plenty of ways of using the keyboard or the mouse to maneuver however I'm only going to use the navi cube so I'll click on here just click on that little arrow there that should now turn it to the side so I can see the paw is facing up in the air I need it to be going down and I can tell already because I know Sol's geometry like the back of my head it's into it won't snap to the right degree so I probably need that to be minus 27 and a half because it looked like 27.5, that's a number that's halfway between the two options that we were um, snapping between. That looks good to me in terms of the vertical alignment. Using the Navi cube again, click on the arrow to look at the front. That looks kind of right, but as I know Sol's geometry really, really well, I know that it's actually turning in slightly. So that's aligned left and right. What we can do now is look down from the top and I'll see that it's twisted slightly. So what I'm looking for is the widest point on these now, as I'm looking down from the top, the widest point are the tips of the condyles, the outer edges of the bell of the elbow. And now if I was to put an, uh, a bolt through this elbow, that would form the axis of the hinge joint for the elbow. And I can see here it's slightly off center. So I need to twist this round. I need to turn the stump so that it turns counterclockwise, probably two or three degrees, and that will be perfect. And I may need to change it later on again but it will give me a very good starting position. Right, and rem remember that this is, is being captured in the design tree, but everything that happens with all of these movements now will be tracked by uh, Fusion's history tree. Right, so let's get back on with twisting this into its final position. And uh, what I need to do again is select the pivot point. Turn, in order to access that, that, that um, origin that we've centered the body on, I need to turn the body off again. If you just click, I just turn the visibility of the body off and I'm gonna wait until the white dot there snaps to center. And that again means that I'm now oriented so that any changes I make are relative to this origin. It's kind of a fixed point in an infinite world. Right, so there's only one 
um, rotation wheel available. The other two are obscured because they're in dimensions that we can't see, like so. I'm only interested in this one, so looking straight down from the top again. And I'm just going to turn it slightly. Oh, no. I think it likes a zero. I forgot to check the green tip. Uh, I'm going by eyesight here, but that looks. I think again about three degrees. It's probably right. Seems like I'm being incredibly fussy, but these things are important. So there we go. So we now have an aligned eye. I know that this is this soft, fleshy part here is the inside. This is this would be the sole's wrist here. Uh, the elbow, if his arm came down, would bend, move up and down, uh, just like this. So the origin served its purpose for now, so we'll get it back out of the way. And that's what it should look like. When you click on the front of the NaviCube, this is these are the contours that you should see. And there we go. So in the next video, we'll be showing you how to wrap the geometry from the create space um, around the socket and how to manipulate it to get that first um, check socket made. But I'm going to bring the video to an end here and just wish you luck. And by all, by all means, ask questions in the comments if anybody gets stuck. I've made that look quite easy. Trust me, it's going to give you headaches. It's taken me five years and 54 prosthetic arms for kids uh, to get this to the point where I, I know exactly what I'm doing. When you're bringing in something that doesn't have any discernible features, it's sometimes really difficult. But I'm guessing if you're like me, then you're a, a dad or a relative who's making an arm for uh, somebody close to you. And you're going to know the geometry of their arm really, really well. Or you could be um, a pra you know, practicing CPO. And of course, I'm teaching my grand grandmother to suck eggs. But um, yeah, that's now nicely aligned. So let's just recap on what we've done. So you've got a copy of the uh, Sol's Paw. You're going to bring it into Fusion 360 using the insert mesh, and then you're going to use the method that I've just shown you to align it and get it facing the right way. Now, if anybody wants them, I have a whole bunch of other scanned uh, OBJ quads for differing degrees of limb impairment. Um, and if there's something that's closer to the kind of arm that you're looking to make, then maybe I can help you with that. If there's any design work that you'd like to do, if there's any um, cleaning up of 3D scan files, if you would like us to actually do this process for you or create um, a digital socket for um, a corrected positive that you've already picked up, either through your prosthetist or that you've made yourself, then um, yeah, get in touch and we can do you a quote. But I am giving all of this information away to show everybody in the world how I do what I do for my son. One day I want him to be able to watch these videos and be able to do it himself. So that's it for me. In the next episode of this series, I'm going to be showing you how to do the, um, the wrapping, the, the, using the pull command to wrap geometry around this to create um, a check socket. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe and uh, spread the word around that we're here. Take care.